Wow, I'm surprised our Craigslist ad got hit that fast. We literally put on like 60 seconds ago. I told you you needed to get rid of this cat when you first got it in the first place. But he's so cute. Look at him. He, uh, he's like Clifford, but a cat. I think he just stepped on a person. It's fine. They, they weren't doing anything. I'm, I've, I've lost my voice yelling at him. We, we can't keep him. Okay. So where are we meeting him, Bobby? Uh, the This crossroads, it's weird. I couldn't even get an address. Google Maps just pulled up Longitude and Latitude for me. His name's Lou. He seems like a nice guy. It's in the Devil's Valley, so it should be fine. Oh, yeah, great. Fine. Yeah, nothing can go wrong. Oh, oh th I think that's him right there. Wow. Why is there hellfire behind him? That's just a mirage. Yeah, it's, it's just hot. It's like 90, it's 95 yeah. here in Georgia. It's okay. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? I said fucking titties. Okay. Anyway, well. welcome to the Free Rotation Podcast. Today is part three of our discussion about Lucifer. And ding, I ding, 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 ding. believe I had the easiest one, even though there's a lot more of it. Yeah, you had the... Well, that's why it was easier, because you had a lot more to work with. True, true. But I am, Bo I am Bobby. I'm joined with my wonderful lady friends, Beckles. Hello. And the best producer on the fucking planet Earth. To my... I mean, damn right. <laughs> Angie. <laughs> Sold my soul for this. Did Ursula take your voice? <laughs> uh, it's poor and fortunate. Soul. Soul. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real today. <clears throat> Otherwise known as being allergic to cats and dogs and having them. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's but yet, yeah, today, we are talking about Lucifer and pop culture. He appears across all mediums and has been portrayed in a bunch of forms and alignments. What His are you most doing with your hand? I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, I'm bored with this. Okay. His most common appearance is that of a red demon with a biforked tail and a pitchfork. But as time has gone on, they've changed that stereotypical appearance into a variety of forms. Why did Chuggy run out of here in fear when you said that? Because I'm actually him. I know. <laughs> Didn't you say you thought Bobby was Lucifer because of his pompadour? He's definitely Lucifer. Oh. <laughs> I'll purr something. This isn't even his final form. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Dragon Ball Z. God bless. <laughs> but we don't have time to talk about all his appearances because fuck. We have to change the day of the podcast to so the Happy Hellfire Hour. That's actually a fantastic podcast idea. I would be on Happy board for Hellfire this. Hellfire Hour? Yeah. There's only so many times we could talk about gaming. Let's just change it and talk about Hellfire. Deal. We just put bad sound effects to the back <laughs> of it all the time. Do y'all smell something in the air? Maybe it's a little bit of Is sulfur. It? Yeah. That was just a fart. I thought Becky, like, squeezed out a screech again. <laughs> I did have some milk earlier. Ooh. Aren't you lactose intolerant? I like to gamble. Kind of like that ghost. Yes. Annabelle. Oh, yeah. Fuck that milk. Ugh. What? Okay, so Annabelle comes home. It's a little girl's birthday. And they make her a pink cake, and they serve it with milk. Well, mm -hmm. as the babysitter's cleaning up, the milk is like... So Becky goes, bitch, I'm lactose intolerant. Don't be serving none of that shit around here. So I'm thinking with how like, you just slid across the table, it's a fucking cat. That's what Angie said. said it's clearly a cat. It's clearly. And then, like the one girl trip because something just reached out and grabbed her leg. Oh, it's a cat. That's a cat. It's a cat. But um, I feel like we should. It was Lucifer. Yeah, it was, was Lucifer. I feel like we should briefly touch on a lot of the, especially the manga and anime stuff <gasps> they use the name lucifer say the title satan and the devil interchangeably so it's all the same character i feel like or at least based on the character or the being. well everybody yeah everybody at this point has kind of interchangeably inter or my interchangeable uh interchangeably uses <laughs> lucifer the do it yes the crusaders started this problem <laughs> those fucking monsters those monsters but yeah i think it that's you know, at this point, everything is sort of interchangeable. So everybody uses Lucifer as a metaphor for the <clears throat> devil. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, we have been talking about you need to dis you need to disconnect them from each other. But now we're bringing them back together because this is pop culture. It's goofy fun times. Yeah, goofy fun times. But we're going to start with books slash comics slash manga. Squeeze. <laughs> A kawaii. And the I first. I get my voice to do it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
that's a tie. There we go. Okay. Oh, back. God. And the first one I decided to discuss is more of a lighthearted romp. It's called The Devil's a Part-Timer. This is one of Angie's favorites, by the way. So I've actually never watched this. I know the basic premise, but it's on my Netflix queue. I'm going to watch it eventually. I might watch it today. Who knows? But I guess working fast food is hell when Lucifer, Lucifer is literally trying to be your assistant manager. Because I know that's a, that's, a, that's a running thing. He's trying to become a manager, right? But um, yeah, he's stuck on our he's stuck on our plan of existence. Like, I need a job, Mig McRonald, which is obviously a parody of McDonald's because Ronald McDonald because blah, blah, blah. copyright's a thing. It'd yeah. be funny if he worked at Chick Fil A. Oh my god, that <laughs> okay. would have been even funnier. Been gas. I don't know if Japan has Chick Fil A, so they might. They Who might. Knows? We'll look that up later. But yeah, he looks like oh, how's there his appearances as well through each individual thing. But uh, he looks like your typical anime bad boy, which. Of course, Becky, being the small Asian child, will go, no! cra- go crazy over. Go away, this is... I can't believe I have been relegated to do the anime voice because your voice <laughs> is gone right now. Thank God, boy, that's your typical anime bad boy. Yeah, I, I always picture uh, Kirudo from uh, Sword Art Online whenever I picture, like, anime goth boy. That's what I picture. I've never seen it, though, so I don't know. You've watched most of it, right? You got to... I know you can't speak, yes. but you got to speak out loud. <laughs> this yeah. is a, this is an audio podcast, FYI. <laughs> well, I wish it was a visual podcast. No. I brushed my teeth and kind of my hair today. <laughs> Look at my hair. My hair's been fucked up oh, today. Oh, I put on a bra just for you. Aww. Yeah. But made you look. <laughs> I look. Boobs are boobs. There's there. But yeah, so you know, I think it's a funny idea that he has to he has to get a job. Even the king of hell has to, you know. You can always know, like, the demonic characters because they have little TV, little TV yep. points. Oh, yeah. That's for any anime, though, it seems like. It's like it's either a cat person or a demon and or both. Or they're a f- or our 15,000-year-old dragon lady that looks like she's 10. Oh, yeah. That is weird. Isn't that in uh, My Hero Academia or something? I th- think so. I don't, I don't know. It's all of them. All yeah. of the animes. But our next one, the most famous, or at least one of them, is Paradise Lost. Satan, formerly called Lucifer, is the first major character introduced in the poem. He is was the most beautiful of all angels, essentially me. <laughs> <laughs> and a tragic figure and declares better to resign in hell than serve in heaven. Rain. 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 I mean, he resigned. He came yeah, and, I he can't. got stuck and became a part-timer here. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't <laughs> fucking read. He put his two-week notice in hell and ended up at McGronald or whatever. Because he got sick of it. He just wanted a vacation. But he got stuck. I like how you're bringing all of the like different versions of Lucifer for pop culture into this. He yeah. needed a vacation. This is the pop culture universe. It is true. But yeah, he got cast it's out like from this he- scary movie. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I'm being way too jazzed up right now for 11 in the morning. But um, yeah, he was a bad boy and got kicked out of heaven and was condemned to hell. Is this the super long poem? Yes. This is the super long yeah. version, right? Because I get Dante's Inferno and Paradise Lost mis- mixed up. But this is like his whole thing about how he ends up descending into hell and how he wanted to rebel against God, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. This was one of the first iterations, uh, people who listen to our podcast, all dozens of you, that we talked about in the first episode because um, this was one of the first versions of him being called Lucifer. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, you know, before that in the Bible, he was never oh. called Lucifer, but this was his first, like, thing yeah it came out in what 1663 i believe yes. sometimes it's 1600s you know right around the salem witch trials and you know which the witchcraftery of the world and all of that most definitely angie loves this poem i think weren't you a big fan of this poem i thought you were a big fan of this poem thank you said she was uh, i liked it the problem is like it's so long <laughs> that <laughs> sorry <laughs> it you know it kind, it kind of starts to you know you know you know what never mind never mind i can't is this in the free rotation podcast? So that it's speaks so phallic. long, it's impossible to take it all in. <laughs> I like how your voice came back for that part. <laughs> That's because it's like this. <laughs> Angie's talking like an NPR host right now. I still can't do the Kawhi. Stephen King, Bobby. <laughs> yes, Stephen King. So Stephen King's short story, The Man in the Black Suit, it's about a young boy that encounters Lucifer slash the devil dressed in, who would have thunk it, black. Black. <laughs> it's a metaphor. It's gonna blow your mind. Why are we Why are we bringing color in this though? So I need to know. Oh, Come on, racist. Stephen King. But he <laughs> he has pale skin, claw like fingers, and when he grins, his mouth exposes horrible shark teeth, and he smells like dog shit. Shark teeth? Yeah, shark teeth. That's what it said. Oh. Right? Yeah, it's like I read the book too. I was like a little short story too, because isn't everything's eventual? Yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's spooky. Mm-hmm. Like and then like it ends like the kid runs away, gets away. And at the end, it's him like in a nursing home. He's like, 
I can't run anymore. And the devil comes get yeah. you. Mm-hmm. You can't run from the devil. Well, you know, I, too, was reading a book. There's a couple books I'm reading right now. One's called The Devil Aspect, because I think it does involve the devil, but I haven't gotten to that part yet. But the one that Angie recommended was Anne Rice's Mimnock the Devil, and it takes the perception of why uh, Lucifer fell, mm-hmm. quote-unquote. I'm only about I'm three-fourths of the, the way through. It's Interview with the Vampire series. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Lestat uh, meets Lucifer... Mimnock, he doesn't like to be called any of that. And he explains that he's not a bad guy. He just questioned God and why you created these things. He questions why would you create people and then make them prove themselves. Makes it, sense. It makes, it makes no sense. And then you send them down for punishment until basically you warp their minds into what you wanted. To, you could have just created it to be in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, well, it was the whole free will thing. Yeah, so it's, you know, they have all these weird iterations of it. I just like that you kind of have, like, three different versions of what people have seen mm-hmm. in pop culture with books. So you have, like, the Animu Weavy Boy playing the devil, and then you go to the actual, like, Hail Satan, Lucifer version of Paradise Lost. And then Stephen King always does some crazy-ass shit with different characters. Although I'm just... Stephen King's books it's like they start out so strong and then they just end in like like a puff not all of them but some of them yeah, yeah. So, but his short stories are incredible yes As, if he just stayed with the short stories yeah. he probably would have you know a lot of his stories would be more condensed mm-hmm. i think even the man in black that roland chased across the desert ended up being like a variant of lucifer in that movie. Mm-hmm. um fuck what was his name faust R- roland no faust mm. He's like, oh, well, the man in black has like 15 different names because he's like a recurring yeah. villain in the books. And Joe Hill, who's also Stephen King's son, wrote Horns, yes, which was also kind of a demonic aspect of Lucifer and how um, this guy just randomly becomes evil. Because he gets knowledge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He gets knowledge about you everything. You can't hide from it. Yeah. You know, it's the truth. He'll make you mm-hmm. speak it. The knowledge thing. Kind of like he is the light bearer. Oh, my God. Look at us bringing us back. Kind of like he the knowledge pool. Wow. Back to magic. That's amazing. Huh. Thank you for joining us today on NPR. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, hail Satan. <laughs> <laughs> My nipples got hurt thinking about that. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> All right. But, but uh, also, Bobby, we were discussing uh, South Park. Oh, the yes, South yes. Park devil. <laughs> yes, the, the most flamboyant. <laughs> Satan. <laughs> so, Satan in the South Park universe is the most flamboyant homosexual, it's ridiculous, who is sleeping with... Hitler. S- uh, and Saddam Hussein. Uh, oh, Saddam, another. Saddam, I don't feel like you appreciate me. Uh, Shut up, bitch. Satan. <laughs> I've watched maybe three episodes of South That's Park right. ever. It's Saddam. Yeah. Saddam. That's hilarious, us, though. It is fucking great, because Saddam is like, it's like a photorealistic version of himself. Like He's not animated Saddam like the other characters. Saddam is really like the satan yeah he's like he's worse satan is like kind of a nice guy mm-hmm. kind of he's like, just trying to make a good life for himself in saddam oh <laughs> that yeah. is so sad and he's then he's been m- hurt before yeah. by hitler yeah and then in the, mo- <laughs> <laughs> in the movie cartman like beats the wall so in the south park movie they come up with this chip that every time you curse it shocks you well, with how Cart- much Cartman curses, the chip overloads and it gives him like superpowers and he just beats the fucking shit out of Saddam by just yelling the most phallic things in the world and it's amazing. <laughs> That's Everyone hilarious. Needs look- Everyone needs to look that clip up on YouTube. It's the best. But now we're segueing. That was a little segue into, in- into film, television, anime. Which is different than manga. Yes. You, you, you normies. Yeah. You, mm. you filthy fucking and weebs. Yes, before you mail us, Robin... <laughs> we do know the devil is a part timer is an anime. Yes. As well as a manga. Thank oh. you. Hail Satan. <laughs> <laughs> but this this first one we're gonna discuss actually might be my favorite portrayal of Satan. We're talking about supernatural and he in this universe is the original ruler ha- ruler of hell and the creator of demons. In this universe, demons aren't fallen angels. He just was like poof, there you go. And he's seen as their father figure and their god. He's kind of a shitty dad, but eh, it's fine. He is the second born archangel and is the younger brother of Michael and the older brother of Raphael and Gabriel. And he's a recurring character. He's the main antagonist of like season five, ten, and twelve, I think. But yeah, I like this one. Like he is evil. Yeah. Piece of garbage. But 
he has affection for his family, for his brothers. He doesn't want to kill them, but right. he feels and driven to. If you actually watch, okay, I'm going to put claim this because I'm a supernatural purist and I thought the first five seasons were perfect and yes. you could have just ended it there, but you know, we have to do 17,000 seasons before we uh, end a show. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Hail Satan. The fact that what you kind of had to sympathize with Lucifer a little bit because it wasn't that he was just evil it was that that he had been almost created to be evil and that it was always it was his, his the prophecy it was the ineffable plan yeah, it was yeah. The, ineff- <laughs> yeah the ineffable plan <laughs> and it was the pl- okay we'll have to get to good omens <laughs> soon but just the fact that that was his create he was created for that it wasn't like he was you know a f- he was a fallen angel but he that was it that was what he was for all supernaturals like goofiness and monster of the week episodes there is definitely a theme of predestination throughout that show yes. and fighting against fate yeah and that's what the with the winchester brothers and the fact that michael and uh lucifer were supposed to be their i guess he, they were supposed to be their vessels it's been a long time since i've watched supernatural but it's sort of like they're following sort of the path parallel and how they are destined to be the vessels and this mm-hmm. is what the end of the world is supposed to look like so I'm a big fan of Supernatural. The first five seasons, I still maintain, are the best seasons. Every other season, that's kind of hit or miss. I haven't, I'm not caught up. I'm like on season eight. I think season six was the worst. That was yeah. Le- Leviathan? Were, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was so depressing, too, because, like, finally we had Cthulhu in popular culture. How do you beat the end of the world? You bring Le- Leviathans in, apparently. Yeah. And then witches and such. And witches and shit like that. Witches and shit. But now we talk about probably the most, well, the most recent, because the show Lucifer has been on for a lot longer, but Good Omens, it's based off the book by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Get Gaiman? Gaiman? Gaiman. Gaiman. Sweet. He's a gamer. He's Gaiman. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's not the main focus, but he does make an appearance near the end as a big red demon, essentially. He's fucking big. Enormous. Yes. And he literally appears to chastise his son. The fucking Antichrist. Where like, is my disobedient son? Yes. Uh, you ain't my daddy, bitch. <laughs> yeah. My dad's this awkward fuck over here. Where have you been for 11 years? I exactly. Just, I just have to say, I think the premise of Good Omens is probably one of my favorite premises of the apocalypse. The fact that this kid is the Antichrist but gets switched out into like a normal <laughs> English parent and he's like, I don't like nuclear like energy. Get rid of it. Yep. Boop, it's gone. And no, it's because his, yeah. And he believes... Because the have you seen a Bobby? Yeah, I watched the full series. Okay, I, I like how the witch gives him these like, you know, end of the world books. Yeah, <laughs> like these comp- conspiracy theories. He just makes it happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, aliens landed and they gave you a ticket for pollution. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole Atlantis thing was yes. They get on the cruise ship. That oh, was the yeah. Best. They're like this suddenly this these people here before. Yeah, it's just Atlantis has reappeared. What? But the fact that he's like just this normal kid who like yeah. has these powers and then his friend. And his friends and his dog, we don't like you anymore. We're going to go tell your mom. Let me tell you the funniest shit I have seen in a long time is that fucking hellhound coming up. And he's like, when he names it, we will know what his purpose is. Throat ripper, demon destroyer, devourer. His dog, and he's going to play games and chase squirrels down holes. I love it. It starts like a big Doberman just turns into this little pupper. Yes. And And then God narrating, he's like, and then dog discovered cat. (laughs) <laughs> cat beat dog up but yeah, yeah dog it, would come back so the whole premise of the show bobby if you want to explain it is um there's an angel and demon crowley and azirafel i have discovered that the apocalypse is going to happen soon but they like living on earth they enjoy the delicacies and they they're determined to stop it from they're happening. almost humanized at that point exactly because they've been here since the beginning mm-hmm. crowley yeah. was the snake in the garden yep and azirafel was one of the gate guardians of the garden of eden he gave his flaming sword to adam because eve was pregnant and expecting any day yeah Yeah, and he's like how is he gonna fight stuff out there sir do you still have your flaming sword yeah i got it in like a foot locker somewhere the the shit was so fucking funny when you're watching crowley and his earful talking fucking um adam's just swinging the fucking sword at a lion it was the funniest (laughs) shit i just died also the best platonic gay couple yes in, in medium oh i loved when he had to possess the uh the psychic's body yeah and crowley without being sarcastic is like you look very nice in that dress mm-hmm. oh thank you like they're so sweet to each other but the whole and crowley is always showing up to save him yep but the whole premise is that the antichrist is appearing in the world mm-hmm. yeah and it's the end of the world but because they are like the worst 
angel slash demon. They have the wrong kid. They have they give the wrong kid to the wrong couple who, you know, east meets west. It's going to be an ambassador who should be raising this kid. And instead of that, they accidentally switch the Antichrist out with this very normal English couple who raised him in a small village. And meanwhile, what, and he's a good kid. Meanwhile, they fuck up a normal ass kid because they're like, it's okay to be good. Fuck everything up. It's good to be evil. Because their thing is that they cancel each other out. Yep. Gotta and, keep the balance. And they do. I, I loved it at the arc. And he's like, what's happening here? Oh, God's decided to destroy them all. What? Even the kids? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you lost a unicorn. You still have right one. <laughs> that was, so was like, oh, oh, it's too late. It yeah. was good TV. If you guys have Amazon Prime and or, you bet, be careful, Netflix did cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Christians, getting Netflix to cancel it. I also Sweet. heard Amazon Prime canceled Stranger Things. <sighs> yeah. Right before season three. Right before too. season but, um, three. Um, but anyways. But now we talk, get to. Oh, girl. Beckles' favorite. Oh, my God. I love Lucifer. Love the, sh- the, the, the self-titled Lucifer. Oh. Wait, and it's a series that revolves around... Actually, why don't you talk about it? Because so, this is your favorite. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite series of all time. Even though it is just pure, fluff, mindless entertainment. But I love it. And boobies. And sure, yes. So it's based on the Sandman series from Neil Gaiman again. Thanks, Neil Gaiman, for all of your demonic stuff. But what it is is essentially, Lucifer decides he wants to take a vacation from hell. He's tired of being the ruler of hell. And so he comes to Los Angeles, the city of angels, and opens a nightclub called Lux and decides that he's going to fight crime with detective. And what does Lux mean? Light. Light. (laughs) Yep. I learned that because I played League of Legends. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but so the entire show is basically revolving around Lucifer who never lies about him being the devil. He is like, yeah, I'm the devil. Yeah, I do these things. Yeah, I'm the devil. And everybody's kind of like, this man's crazy. This is Los Angeles. Well, finally, everybody finds out that, yes, he is the devil. But I think Castle, but if Castle were the devil. Yes. It that, was supernatural shit in it. Yeah. 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 But Tom Ellis, I think, is probably one of my favorite iterations of him because he's not a bad guy. And that's what Chloe, who's his partner and slash his soulmate, uh, says, is that you're not a bad person. You're not a bad guy. You were an angel that fell, but you're not bad. So he tries to kind of fight being evil, but be evil at the same time because this whole thing is like live life the way you want to live it. Let's have orgies. Let's have all the sex. Let's do all the drugs. Let's, you know, whatever, as long as you are living life. So And are consensual. And are consensual yep. about it. He is like the – I love the show. And the, the fourth season, best season. Uh, my favorite bit from the show is that when the, guy, the kid's delivering pizza – and he's like, oh, oh yeah. here's a bunch of money. Oh, do you know Chassie and what's her face? Let's ha- go have a threesome. Yeah, here, thanks for bringing the pizza. Guys, it's pizza. He's like, have you ever done this before? No. Oh. <laughs> Are you of age? <laughs> Which, funny enough, in the fourth season, does have an appearance of Eve, who was apparently, allegedly, his first love. He was, oh. spoiler alert, it was not his first love, but. Well, that's Paradise Lost Story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it kind of brings it all back. But he is an angel. And in the fourth season, he's fighting from becoming an actual devil. Yeah. Um, yeah. You see that. And on the um, I haven't watched the fourth season, but like on the Netflix little uh, placard, you see him red and stuff. Yeah. And his skin's flicking off and all that yeah. stuff. It's because Eve is actually a bad influence on him. Well, and, and that's also pretty much the same story almost of Sabrina. Yeah. Which was another show that had a lot of the devil, the devilness in it. Um they don't. I don't think they ever call him Lucifer. Well, no, they do call him Lucifer. Yeah, I do think they do. Um, but that was a whole nother. Well, because remember when he falls from heaven and his wings are torn off, Lilith finds him and right. she nurses him back to help. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's and that iteration is like pure evil. Like he is when he fell from heaven, he, he was he evil. He gets warped. Yeah. His bitterness and resentfulness warps him. Yeah. And if you didn't know, what Sabrina is also on Netflix. So. After Good Omens got canceled, you can watch it on Netflix as well. Uh, can we just briefly touch on that Neil Gaiman has written two things about Lucifer? I think. He also wrote he American Gods. Yeah. yeah. He, I he's... think he's a plant. Oh, he's a prophet. Maybe. Or. He could be Lucifer's Metatron. Exactly. Oh, damn. Oh, he does write good uh, stories, though. A Metatron. Right. Oh. He's God's he, bookkeeper. But you know what he could be instead of Metatron? Hey. He's Megatron. <gasps> Because Lucifer has a sense of humor. Oh, my God. <laughs> they just mistranslated it. Yep. It was actually Megatron. Calvin well, Calvin Johnson was actually uh, Lucifer's, like, keeper or whatever. He just runs real fast. Mm-hmm. True. And, Bobby, we can't miss Constantine. Oh, fuck. You're right. I for- It's because it was only for the one season, but he's in, like, Legend of Tomorrow and stuff. Yes. 
Lucifer is in Constantine because he sold his soul to the devil to, well, he sold his soul to the, he had a fucked up ritual that caused his little girl to get sucked down there. And then also and in the show, you don't get to see it as much because only one season, but he in the comics at least has his soul sold to three different devils. And then when he fucks them over, it gets sent to the big bag man himself, which is gas. I would just like to also point out the Keanu Reeves version was quite entertaining. It was. It was. It was Keanu Reeves. But he, the, that one was that he committed suicide. Yes. He's breathless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's breathtaking. <laughs> but what's also funny about the, the Keanu Reeves version is that in the comics, the original cutscene references meeting, a, going to alternate dimension and meeting a version of himself that lives in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, man, that's hilarious. I just, it, but you know what? That would that version of Lucifer is probably the nastiest kind. Oh, yeah, he's like a, he looks like a, he's like a slug. He looks, yeah, yeah, he looks like a slug, and he like has like weird nasty sheen on him. Stuff like that is gross, man. Yeah, and he's like doesn't wear fucking shoes and a fucking he's walking on nasty glass. ass. Yeah. That's how you get fucking like staff infection, you sick bastard. I want to go back real quick sure. to um, Good Omens because mm-hmm. there's a good point to make in that Lucifer and Good Omens. It was Crawley who was in the garden. And it was Crowley who tempted, you know, Jesus mm-hmm. in the desert. Because remember, when they meet at the um, crucifixion, mm-hmm. Crowley says, oh, yeah, I met him. Spent some time with him. But I think my favorite and what's sad lines of that show is, ah, what did this guy do to deserve this? He's told him to be kind to each other. Oh, that'll do it. <laughs> that is yeah. super fucking depressing. I was like, that's funny and so But sad. it wasn't any sort of influence from Lucifer himself. It was no. the demonic influence. It was, no, it was just that humans are awful. Like, yeah. most of the shit that happened, they would talk to each other and be like, no, people decided to do it themselves. But Crowley got all the credit for it. He got credit for World War Two and, and the like, Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, he's yeah. like, I didn't do it. Humans did it to themselves. And think about it, like Agnes Nutter burns at the stake. She, what were some of the prophecies she was telling you? She says she walks a mile because it's good for your health, <gasps> and that you should eat more fiber. Which <laughs> I thought it was great that she put fucking nails and gunpowder inside of her dress yes. to fucking wreck she everybody. And just for context, Agnes Nutter was the prophet in like the Salem witch trials, who basically predicts every single thing that happened happens in good omens like she Mm -hmm. and it's specific it's not like you shall see a giant metal thing fly over your head specific to the point where Aziraphale is reading and she's like and when you read this be careful your cocoa is getting cold (laughs) and you're about to spill it you didn't listen did you and he's like oh my god it's me I thought it was pretty yeah it was hilarious now we do have one more in the realm of in, in the realm of anime Mm-hmm. Uh, in the in the show slash manga for you weebs, Blue Exorcist by Kazuke Kato, I think that's how you say his name. Which is a very good one as well. It is. It's gas. Um, the main characters, Rin and his twin Yuko, are actually the sons of Satan. I think what how it's divided up is how Rin gets the, the hellfire and stuff, mm-hmm. and Yukio gets the yeah. knowledge. Think of like Inuyasha Brothers. Yeah. That's what this reminds me of. Mm-hmm. And it's it's pretty good. I don't... We only get to see glimpses of Lucifer. We don't get like... I don't think yeah. we get a full vicious of him. Like the only time we really get to see him is when... Their adoptive father gets possessed at like the first or second episode by him, and he looks spooky. Yeah, he's a spookums. But it's just good. I like the show. It. Um, be careful when you're watching it though, because like the original anime run halfway through, goes off the rails. It completely de- it devoids from the manga. But then and this is why, because and then season three they get back to it, but mm-hmm. you're just done with it at that point. Yeah, you're like, why would they retro it and change it? Well, I do remember watching a few episodes, and then suddenly it like derails itself, and I'm like, what? No, you're like, wait a minute. This, this makes no continuity sense. They do that a lot. Like when the anime catches up to a manga, they, it's, 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 the same thing happened like Full Metal Alchemist, the original run. Yeah, they Bleach. caught up to them. Yeah, and Bleach. Yeah, yeah, Bleach had a really big problem. A lot of show and anime had a lot of problem with filler, but that's whatever. That's why I don't watch. That's a lot what of makes it. shown in anime anime. True. Hyperbolic time chamber. Four episodes later. True. Gohan saves these kids. Ten episodes. Yeah. Aizen just talks about what he's going to do to his hair. 15 episodes. 15. <laughs> uh, that, that's the best episode arc. Thank oh, yeah, you very yeah. much. <laughs> that's what inspired you, yes. sir. Okay. But now we're going to delve into video games. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the Castlevania series, which is normally known as like Dracula being the bad guy, in the Lord of the Shadow series, one and two, Lucifer's the main antagonist, and he appears as a half, well, mostly naked man. He's got a little loincloth. He's a cutie pie. <laughs> <laughs> As the as the final boss and main antagonist in both one and two. 
And it's because in those games, you play as Dracula or Alucard. No, Dracula. You play as Dracula, I and, believe. And there's now a Netflix series. Yes. And that show is gas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Everyone watch it. Yeah. I want to see where they take season three. If they do Simon's Quest do, or something like that. Do they show Lucifer in this, that series? No, they do not. I don't mm-hmm. think so. It's just it's just Alucard. It's only two yeah. seasons so far they could. Oh, uh, I guess so. They just they picked up kind of like midway through where he's already Dracula. And... Mm-hmm. I kind of like how a lot of these games, like we talk about Mimnock and uh, Castlevania, where the are vampires and they're meeting like the creators mm-hmm. it's so strange because it's kind of like vampires are against what that sort of that religious aspect is so the fact that they're meeting like these creations it's like were we created like because of their existence or were we created despite their uh existence who, in spite of their who existence? creates the creators dun, dun. who watches yeah, the watchers what i said last week yep. who created the creators who watches the watchmen because vampires were one of the races created by tiamat <laughs> <laughs> and we're back no i like i like angie when she goes on her tangents they, it, i learned a lot of things becky looks at me like oh boy turn i did see that look she gave a little side eye but like, um, turn the microphone off again no stop it stop it stop it oh. you're on my notes i can't move the notes kuchiki 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 oh yeah that's the next one i knew it was one of the two because <laughs> <laughs> i did three video games but um, and Guitar Hero Three: Legends of Rock. Yeah, we're going real off the rails here. I forgot about this. This totally about takes it. a full like left turn yeah, into what? Yeah, Lucifer, on the alias of Lou. <laughs> Puns. Hey, did we meet him at the crossroads? We did meet him at the crossroads. He's a nice man. He was a nice man. He smelled funny. Oh, he took Lucifer. Yeah. yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> full circle. Is that a flaming guitar on his back? I probably. He offered to sell me something, but I had to like. Sign a piece of paper, and I wasn't into yeah, it. Yeah, don't let Becky read it first. <laughs> True. Your name is Robert. Roberto. Roberto. But um, he is shown as the manager for the player's band. But it's later revealed that the band has inadvertently sold their souls to him. You stupid That's why fuck. they're stuck in the game and constantly having to play against you. But also, we have one more appearance. Oh, we have. there's so many fucking video game appearances. Yeah. Right? There's like Dante's Inferno with the whole game. Yeah, and we talked about Dante's already, so I didn't want to call the video yeah. game and stuff. But we have cu- in Cuphead. Which, if y'all should play Cuphead, that game's gas. No, it's way too difficult. I ra- I thought I was going to stroke out playing that game. Never again. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, I know you can't see, but Chuki completely laid across every bit of Bobby's show notes. It's okay. But, um, yeah, we um, Satan appears in Cuphead. He's the main antagonist in the game, the final boss, as well as the owner of Inkwell Hell Casino. And, like, other, unlike other depictions, he has zero ring wings. And he's a furry demon. Oh. Chi-chi, ha-ha. Morla would be a big fan. Uh, yes. <laughs> Everybody got there. It only took a minute. Yeah. I already was there. I've never played Cuphead. I've always wanted Angie to play it on stream just because she strokes out in any sort of difficult game. It's like the Mega Man of our times, essentially. It went on the yes. platform. It's hard as fuck. It's way too difficult. I just didn't realize that Lucifer was the antagonist of it. I just didn't get that feeling from a game called Cuphead. Well, and... Yeah, and this is a whole thing, but um, because it's hell. The yeah. whole game is hell. It's hell. It's hard. It's hard as hell. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> yes, but now we get a little bit more <laughs> real life with Lucifer in music, which rock and roll, blues, jazz has always been like throughout, like progressively going along. It's like anything that sounds a little different than the norms, like. That's the devil's music. That's Satan. That's Satan's mm, song. Satan's song. Especially jazz. That's jazz? satin tatic. Yeah. <laughs> jazz was considered the devil's music in the 20s because people are fucking stupid and it's fine. Jazz is the devil's music. And when I say that, I mean that I fucking hate it. It's not that bad. Uh. It's not that bad. It could be worse. That's true. There's a man named Robert Leroy Johnson. He was a big, big, big blues musician back in the day. Mm-hmm. And his life wasn't documented that well, so... One, it's given the rise to a legend that he sold his soul to the devil at, at a local crossroads to achieve musical success. Old scratchy. A lot of people think Katy Perry, like, this is a very real new thing. Like, believe that Katy Perry did the same thing. Oh, yeah. That, like, and, lots of, and, yeah. And there's, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt No, no, you. no, you go ahead. And there is something, I, I didn't research it, but I want to look it up. I want to see, you know, the 27 Club? Yes, I was just thinking that. I want to see, like, how many of them are theorized to have sold their soul. There was a lot of theories back when Amy Winehouse died, and I think there was one other person who died right after her, that they said that they sold their soul to the devil because they rose to fame so quickly but died so young. Kind of with Kurt Cobain, same same kind of a 
perception. But what's her face had him killed? Oh, Courtney Love. Oh yeah. Maybe Courtney Love was a demon. Succubus. I don't think she did it. I don't think Uh she did it either. I think she probably perpetuated her his suicide a little bit. Possibly. Mm -hmm. I watched a documentary about it, and I was like, "Oh, this is kind of compelling." But then the documentaries always try to push push it towards their theory. That that documentary is very compelling. Yes. A lot of the stuff she did, you're like, she had to know. But I think that she's smart enough to have pushed him to do it to himself. That makes sense. Yeah. She, she, her IQ is second on the planet. Really? You know who the first is? Keisha. They are one and two in their IQs. I think somebody that smart knows how to get away. Probably. Keisha's also. Well, awesome. if you ever saw Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of Crystal Skull, when you get that knowledge, it wants it ends up killing you. Yep. That feels like a reference to yeah the, the, the garden. Hey. You're super. But yeah, also, if you are interested in learning more about him, there's a really good documentary on Netflix. Hey, net, hey, hashtag ne- Netflix shills. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> this entire thing is Netflix shills. It's called Remastered, The Devil at the Crossroads. And it's it's really good. It's it, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm not big into musical doc, music documentaries, but I enjoyed that. Well, and the thing about his story is that he was so unknown. And he did just a little bit of background about Robert Leroy Johnson. He was not that good of a guitar player when he first started. There was like... He was constantly booed out of wherever he was performing. And then suddenly he showed up and he had a brand new guitar and he started playing. And it was like somebody was controlling his body. And, you know, that devil went down to Georgia. That was based off of like a really old, old myth about the devil selling your soul to Satan to get better at playing fiddle and stuff. Right. That sounds also It's a very real thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also I want to point out, and this isn't mine. I saw this on Facebook, but it says the devil went down to Georgia. Meaning that Georgia is so hot, you have to go up <laughs> to get to hell. <laughs> Just point that out. Yeah, I, I think I've referenced it over time. This is this, this is Satan's uh, vacation home. Yes. <laughs> Not Los Angeles. No. You know, even Johnny Cash made some allusions to selling his soul mm-hmm. for, for fame. And you think, is he talking about addiction or, or what? But you realize his story has this similar qualities. Mm-hmm. Walk the Line, also a very good movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, but speaking of Devil in uh, Georgia, that is the only country song I like. That is it. It's one of the best. Yeah. Also, the Stone Mountain Laser Show with that. Do oh, I've whole... never seen it. Oh, they, they do a little, they do an animated thing for it with the lasers. It's that really, cool. really should have been our uh, state theme song. Sure. Oh, come on. Um, What's his face? Georgia on my mind. I get it. It's a nicer version of it. But, yeah. I mean, Devil Went Down to Georgia. 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 But, hey, come on, Ray did, nice, Ray did a probably massive, not that song. Never mind. He did a massive amount of cocaine. Let the man have his thing, and he was blind. Thank you, so Raiders. My bad. Sorry. Why do you gotta say stuff like that, woman? <laughs> Anyways, devil went down to Georgia, Bobby. Yeah, it's so it's a song. Oh, God damn it! I love you, Kitty, but you're on my nose. Cheeky. Is she on the second set too? Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it right here so you can't touch him. You can't. Oh, now she's rubbing against the mic. <laughs> I love she, you. She likes this conversation. She does. She's like, I Loose phone, per. phone. Yeah, it's a song by the Charlie Daniels band. I think that's like their biggest song. Yes. I don't know. That's like, I didn't really appreciate it. I don't think though. anybody else knows Charlie Daniels. If you're just like on the like fringe of country music, you if you hear Charlie Daniels band, you know Devil Went Down to Georgia. Yeah. It was the first modern popular song to feature a battle between the devil and a musician. Johnny. That's his name, Johnny, right? Johnny, rising up your bow and play your fiddle hard. Georgia and this is about to knock over our sign. No, that was the ghost. Oh, my bad. It's one of the. It's the theme of the battle of the devil has been revisited many times in songs. It's a whole thing, like I like um, in Tenacious D. Yes. Pick a destiny. Yes. That's that movie's great. Movie and band. It's a whole thing with Jack Black and Kyle Gass. But in the movie, they get this pick. They realize that that famous musicians have used this pick throughout history right and it's actually made out of satan's tooth and it makes you play like music like a badass and at the end um he gets it satan gets it back and they have to battle him for their soul for kyle gas's uh, anal virginity okay i mean that is something to battle for i guess because jack black's like if you lose you can have his ass or something like that like so he gets away with everything he wants that's hilarious (laughs) that song you should look at the it's like the called the final battle today should do the final battle watch on youtube it's a very funny song. It's a lot of anal stuff in it, too. Like everything else these days. God bless. The gays are taking over. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. There's also one more music bit. It's the Rolling Stone Symphony for the Devil. It has Mick Jagger speaking as the devil. 
That's all I can fairly find about it. I don't listen to the. I'm not a big fan of Rolling Stones. I've heard Sympathy for the Devil. I for a second got it mixed up with Shout at the Devil. My bad. Yeah. Shout at the Devil. Shout. Shout. Angie's like. Shout it out. Okay, that's sure a completely that's different, song. different song. But yeah. But Angie, I think you had something you want to talk about. Good Omens. You had something. Yes, I think it's interesting to point out that the witches in Good Omens were not sided with Lucifer. No, nope, they were good peoples. They were the human superheroes, so to speak. As opposed to Sabrina, where mm-hmm. the witches <laughs> worship Lucifer. Yes. Do we get the Good Omens-Sabrina crossover we all been hoping for? Yes. Yes. Could that even be a crossover at this point? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Magic, girl, mm-hmm. can do whatever you want. True. Mm-hmm. They can come with some bullshit excuse. Everybody's like, going to hell. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you ladies have anything else to add? That was my little pop culture bits. I think that there's just a lot of different iterations of the devil. You know, he's one of the most prominent figures, iconic figures in the world. So you get all different kinds of iterations. So yeah, we couldn't cover every single freaking one of them. But the ones we did know, these are the ones we do know. Oh, I did want to add something. It was something I wanted to add. And Angie will agree with me on this. That... (laughs) Okay, that... um. That earlier interpretations of Lucifer has uh, portrayed him as pure evil, but as time has gone on, he's gone to it at the worst, more like of a neutral, chaotic good yeah. kind of character. Rather even than just in, like, yeah, even in Lucifer, like the TV show where it's literally Lucifer, he's just chaotic good almost. Because it's like the more enlightened you get, you can't be ignorant. Mm-hmm. He, he, it's ridiculous to pigeonhole. <laughs> History is written by the victors. Yeah. And yeah. it, it's easy to control people through fear and ignorance. Mm-hmm. So you're going to go to hell if you don't do what we say. And we specifically need taxes and your kids well. and war. And I think that every good villain, going back to a lot of like the hero's journey stuff we've talked about in the past, um, every good villain, if you look at it from their perspective, should be sympathetic in some way. Mm-hmm. That's what makes a good villain. So if you do look at it from Lucifer's standpoint, he wasn't a bad guy. He just... He went against God's word, and if you're a Christian, that is not what you do. So I think that I think I like these new iterations of him. Sabrina's iteration is that he's just pure evil, mm-hmm. and then there are like the Constantine iterations that he is evil and all of that. But um, if you also watch Sabrina at the same time, the Christian like Crusaders are also yeah. Sabrina takes on the more Christian storyline that Lucifer hated mankind. He didn't understand why God created us. He didn't know why angels had to exalt humans over themselves. So he hates people. And it turns out that he is trying to wipe people off and enslave them. But then on the so flip side, you see those very... crusaders. They were out to like... The crusaders? The yes, the crusaders. <laughs> and uh, Sabrina, crazy. they just go and try and kill everybody anyway. So it's a b- evil is on both sides. So. Exactly. Yeah, I like it. I like it too. Hey, Becky, where can they find us? Hey! You can find us at Facebook. Spotify? I had to do it for myself. Hey, oh my God, really? <laughs> you can find us on Facebook at the Free Rotation Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at the Free Rotation. You can find us on YouTube at the Free Rotation. You can find us on Twitch at the Free Rotation. You can find us at the Crossroads. You can find us at the Crossroads at not <laughs> Crotch Roads. Crotch Crotch Road. Road. You can find us at the Crossroads. We're not, not SoundCloud though. Yeah, you could. Yeah, we'll be at the Crossroads, not on SoundCloud. <laughs> <laughs> you know, SoundCloud's a little different. And then we have a website. You can check us out at FreeRotation.com. We are also affiliates of Weebie Geeks. You can check out all the great podcasts podcast over at weebegeekspc.com and yeah uh angie's gonna be screaming streaming scary games she's gonna be screaming you're right <laughs> and we're gonna set up a donation bit a jump scare donation so every time like you donate like two bucks it'll like scream at her during the game like at random intervals yes if you donate yes. two bucks back like, ah! yes. that's not the scream but you know i can make it happen i'll donate two bits two dollars bobby Two schmeckles. Two schmeckles. <laughs> and don't forget, everybody. Hail Satan. <laughs> hail. Hail. Shout at the devil. Boom. Free <laughs>